Whoop whoop y'all! Welcome to another episode of Stuff I've Painted in My Live Streams. Today's episode, you've already seen, is the Juggalo Handyman, aka Beefcake! So sit back and relax and watch the show. Here we go, obviously starting off with painting his face white. That's pretty much the standard of how I start. I mean, I, I don't know how else you would start painting Juggalo face paint. That's like an existential question of some sort, and probably a lot deeper than I want to get into. Anyway, here we are. This was one of my favorite pieces that I've ever painted. No doubt about that. This guy has so much character, uh, such a nice, big, bright face, so fun to paint. The flavor that day, you can tell, was Orange Fago. I think that was the first time I had the orange, and I gotta tell you, it is delicious. It tastes like fresh oranges right out of Florida or whatever, I don't know. Anyway, we're here to talk about the, the Juggalo Handyman. <laughs> uh, so there you go, it looks like I've got the white all laid in. It looks nice and clean, nice and consistent really came together really well. This piece, I tell you what, one of my absolute favorites. And stick around till the end, because this, this thing really comes together. I, I gotta say, pretty proud of, of this one. Anyway, just doing a little bit of touch up on the white, and now we're into the black. Here we go, the big show. Time for his Violent J makeup. On this one, I started with the mouth. I don't know why. It's never the same. It's all instinct, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, we're starting on the mouth here. Uh, I had a... Sometimes with these pieces, it's hard to decide where the, the paint needs to begin and end when it comes to the lips, because, you know, you're not painting the inside of your mouth. So there's a portion of uh, the handyman's mouth, or beefcake's Beef mouth, that, uh, that I left open. You can kind of see it in that shot. And I, I think it, it helps make it look more realistic. You could just gloss over the whole thing with black, but it just it doesn't look right. So anyway, working on his cheeks now. Really, really already looking good. My goodness, look at that guy. What a heartthrob. You know what I'm talking about? Just gorgeous. One of the greatest pieces of art. I think, I, I don't know, you could probably put this in the Louvre next to really any piece. You pick. I won't even do it. You pick. Any piece. Beefcake Beef will stand up proudly next to him. No doubt. Absolutely no doubt. Beefcake Beef came to me from my wife. She came home with him one day. Honestly, when he showed up, I thought, that's real weird. I don't know if this is going to work out very well. Because, uh, oh, flavor of the day that day was lemonade. Country time lemonade. Delicious. Um, but yeah, when, when Beefcake, Beefcake showed up at, at our, in the Juggalo dungeon, I, I don't know, it, it's not my standard. It's a large format. It's, it's not the typical subject matter I do. But I am so glad she brought him home. Ugh. So good. Obviously, I liked it once I got started because look how quickly it's coming together. Sometimes I struggle when a piece just doesn't really speak to me. This guy had so much character. Once the painting started, it was very, very hard to stop. See, already we're, uh, we're down to just one brow left to get roughed in, and here we go painting it right in. It's just so good. Look at that. You might also notice the uh, proportions of beefcake are uh, a little interesting. Not really sure who the uh, sculptor was or why they decided that beefcake needed to have just as much rear as he does front. But uh, he is symmetrical in that way. His gut sticks out equivalent to his butt. And uh, he's got a lot of junk in the trunk, I tell you what. A lot of padding. 
Just in case he falls down, I guess. Anyway, uh, flavor of that day was Kiwi Strawberry Fago. If you ever wanted to have a soda that tastes like medicine, Kiwi Strawberry Fago. Don't recommend. Not my favorite. Maybe it's your thing. It's just not mine. It just didn't taste good. Which is a shame, because I love both kiwis and strawberries. Especially together, I think it's awesome. But, uh, not with that one. It's just blech. So anyway, we're doing final touches on the black paint. Already, you can tell, Beefcake is... He's ready for a night out, out on the town. He's so good. It's Beefcake, I don't know why he was painted the way he is. He's, you see him, he's carrying that saw, and he's got a little toolbox. The toolbox had a company name on it for a company I'm unfamiliar with. Must have been a pretty small little company. But uh, I knew that that was ultimately going to end up being part of the repaint of this one. And you'll see that at the end. It'll come around. Still working on the uh, final spit and polish of the black paint. This one is also, I believe, the first one I've painted where I, uh, I went uh, more horrific with it and added, uh, added some blood and gore. I, uh, I'm not opposed to it. I, I actually love blood and gore. Um, it just doesn't typically uh, seem to fit on the other things I paint. But this one, Beefcake, Beefcake definitely wanted some blood and gore. That saw has definitely cut the heads off quite a few of his enemies. Also, Beefcake, Beefcake was broken at some point. The head had been broken off, so I had to uh, replace some of the paint on his shirt and do some color matching, which I did. So here we are adding gore to the saw. I wanted it to very much look like it had cut through someone's neck. So there was a very specific pattern. I also wanted some gore, some flesh-like material to be left on the saw blade. So I used some, uh, some cotton for that. Uh, adds a little bit of texture. It's a little thing I, I picked up along the way in my life of, I don't know, things that I've done. Um, so yeah, hot tip there. If, uh, if you want to paint gore, uh, just wad some cotton into your paint, and it, it makes it look like uh, some fleshy bits have been left behind. Because I don't know if you know this, but uh, blood ain't uh, thin. It's, it's thick, and it uh, accumulates. Hot tip. Hot tip. Alright, so it looks like, uh, looks like we're just doing some final touches on the saw blade. Now you see I've started uh, repainting on that toolbox I was talking about. Had to paint the, uh, the company name off, which was no big deal. Obviously, because it's already done here. And I decided that uh, the new company that Beefcake was going to work for was the Wicked Clown Murder Company. Started painting that in with this uh, kind of metallic gold brass color wanted it to kind of look vintage like uh like windows the the front windows that would be like gold with like a, a black shadow behind it um to signify you know the shop name or whatever i thought it would be a cool look for uh the toolbox so so that's what we went for i'm terrible at lettering please don't judge me by my lettering i have terrible handwriting but i do my best that's a pretty good shot for you to see the uh, proportions of the hindquarters of Beefcake. Beefcake that I referred to earlier. Look at that thing. Beefcake, Beefcake got back for sure, 100%. That guy has done a lot of glute work, a lot of squats in his day. Maybe that tool chest is just full of his murderous tools and very heavy, so picking it up again and again led to that gorgeous rump of his, I suppose. Enough of that. Enough of that. I feel weird now. Um, so yeah, now you see the uh, the black shadow that I'm trying to add to the, uh, the lettering. Definitely help the letters pop. 
but it took a lot of time. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not very good with lettering. Um, it all looks pretty uh, chicken scratchy or childish whenever I, I paint letters. It does not look uh, professional. But, you know, so it goes. Kind of uh, becoming my, uh, my aesthetic, I guess. It's just, uh, just the way of Shovel. Speaking of, my name is Shovel. Um, if you haven't been to one of my live streams, I live stream here on YouTube every Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. You know, it's just a, a cool place to come and watch me paint like this. I've since added another camera so you can see my face while I'm doing these things. But yeah, if you're, uh, if you're looking for a channel to just I'm gonna offer you some cool vibes and, uh, and some creativity, I like to call myself the Bob Ross of Juggalo face painting, stop on by, watch a live stream, or, you know, click on my other stuff and watch. Like and subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and all the other things that the uh, YouTubers say, you know. You know the YouTubers. Anyway, still working on the lettering. It came out a lot better than I expected. Because like I said, I, I'm just not happy with with the way my letters look. Just, just a personal thing. Other people seem to be okay with it. I did a, I did a lot of work on this off camera as well, so there's gonna be a significant jump here very, very quickly. Boom, there it is. Did some blood splatter, didn't want to do too much, wanted it to be subtle. So Beefcake has some on his face, he's got some on his overalls, he's got a lot of blood and carnage on the bottom of his boots and the bottom of his toolbox. But now, hear a word from my customer and friend, J.R. Butcher Pete, my buddy, here he is now. All right, package from Precious Juggalos, the homie Shovel. First order from him. Crack this thing open. Oh, oh, I, I slid one a fold. Really cool, I got to watch him paint this. anything I know it's fragile it looks like it made it safe too oh, yeah. oh uh, the saw did come off but that's no big deal a little super glue oh look at that thing oh yeah <laughs> and I mean, can't look, how can you not love somebody shaped like that? Hell yeah, I love it. Check out Precious Juggalo Shop. Worth every penny. Beefcake.